last day. Beautiful yogis wearing it here with our April yoga tutorial video. Today we will be exploring extended side angle with some options for different arm variations as well as perhaps finding a bind in this shape. So um, I find oftentimes in class this shape um, doesn't get a lot of attention and there's a lot of components to it, so I thought it would be really useful to break it down, find the right variation of a shape for you, and um, finding that perhaps when you practice this shape in class, you can have um, maybe just a different understanding of where you are with this shape. So um, if you want, you can um, probably start with the right side, <laughs> that's the side you normally start on. Um, so we can start sort of in warrior two legs. So you'll come to standing. You also um, may want a block and perhaps a strap for this tutorial, um, just as ways to perhaps deepen the shape for yourself. So you'll come to stand. Um, you'll separate your feet um, a pretty good distance apart. I always like to say about one of your legs lengths apart so that you get the benefit of stretching the legs and also the benefit of strengthening through the legs. Um, if you are fairly new to the practice, feel free to have a shorter stance, and then if you have a more advanced practice, you could take the feet quite wide apart. Um, so we'll start by bending into the right leg. You might find as you bend into the right leg that you could separate the feet further apart. And so we're in warrior two legs. Um, you could have that back foot turned in a bit, but um, I quite like to have the legs um, in warrior two, um, finding that heel to arch alignment. So you may want to prep your block on the highest setting, either inside or outside of the front foot. And we'll actually start in a warrior two. So spreading the arms nice and wide and really activating through the tricep so that you can find that engagement and then really subtly start to hinge the torso forward. So we're starting to create a lot of length into the left side body. And then once you feel like you have that really nice long line of energy into the left side body, you can either bring the right forearm onto the thigh. And let's actually start with the left hand onto the waist. Notice if your heart is facing to the ground. So this is um, really common if you're um, feeling a little bit unstable. Um, into the balance of the shape. See if you can peel the heart open. So finding a space, if you can notice I have this one nice diagonal line all the way from the knife side edge of the back foot all the way up through the side of the body. You can have your left hand at the waist and maybe just start to peel the heart open from here, maintaining the right knee over the shoulder. Or if it's available, we'll actually almost like um, going counterclockwise on a clock you'll start to draw that left arm down and around as you reach the left fingertips overhead. So now you have this really nice long line all the way from the knife side edge of the back foot all the way to your left fingertips. If you notice your left shoulder is sort of creeping in on the ear, I like to sort of maybe even cactus that top arm, create more space, and then from there, re-lengthen. So sometimes we kind of habitually get into these shapes and it feels a little bit constricted. So always feel free to sort of explore depending on where you are, where you're holding any tension. It might feel nice. Sometimes I like to bring the arm down and kind of re-explore extending that top arm up and over and even exaggerating bringing that arm behind the head so that the heart can really start to open up. So. That's one part. We'll switch legs and play with a different variation just so that you're not causing too much fatigue on that front leg. So just turning it around. We'll um, find a different version of our extended side angle second side. So certainly if that felt like your edge, you could continue to just practice that shape with that adjustment. Or if you'd like to go a little bit further, um, and just as always, Further doesn't necessarily mean better. It just depends on where your natural range of motion is, if you're mending any injuries, if you're 
just feeling maybe fatigued in any given moment. So you can always feel free to modify and find the shape that's right for you in any moment, and it's different day to day. So you'll bend through the left leg. We're finding that nice heel to arch alignment. Once again, have a nice spread of the feet. Extend the arms, so starting in warrior two. So this time, reaching the left fingertips forward, this time perhaps your left hand finds the block. You can bring your right hand to the waist once again and then start to open up. So we're trying to, to open up through the shoulders, open up through the heart, and perhaps you even shift your gaze skyward depending on where your neck is happiest. So finding that the neck is still at that axis and then revolving from there. So sometimes it's even nice to bring the right hand behind the skull and lean back into space. So that's a really nice variation. You can ground down through the left palm and actively guide the left arm into the left leg as you encourage the opening of the left hip. So as you can see, the left knee is tracking somewhat over the second and the third toe, and particularly tracking right over the ankle. <clears throat> Good, inhale, rising up. So maybe that's your variation. We'll switch sides once again so that we're creating equanimity in the body. <clears throat> it's a little bit um, more challenging and sometimes um, not necessarily most beneficial for the shape to have the hand all the way to the earth or outside of the leg. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if you'd like to go further, you can place the block outside of the right leg. You'll come to bend into the right leg once again. So more or less finding that 90 degree angle into that front leg, really strong through the leg. This is a really nice foundation shape for building a lot of leg strength, a lot of shoulder flexibility, and a lot of um, back flexibility as well as we start to open up through the heart. There's, it's a really full body experience, um, which is one of the reasons why I love this shape so much. So we'll start in warrior two once again. Start to hinge forward. So right away creating a lot of length into the left side body. And then this time perhaps you extend your right palm outside of the right leg. And then Yogi's choice. You can have your hand on the block or onto the earth. So your left hand is on the waist to begin with. So if you want to move the block out of the way and find the hand onto the earth, you can. But notice what happens, right? I lose a lot of space into the right side body. And so it's a really great moment to recognize that just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean it services the pose or services the body. So oftentimes, if I have the availability I like to have the hand on the block because then it allows for that bottom side body to create more space. And then from there, I can express the top arm. That top arm, the pinky turns towards the face and we're plugging the shoulder in to the socket. So rather than cramming um, the space between the shoulder and the ear, there's a release. And then you spin your gaze, perhaps to that top palm. Good, inhale, rising up. Ooh, turning the right toes in and the left toes out. So finally, we'll find our bind. So if you have a strap handy or a belt or even um, a men's tie or anything about yay long, we'll do the trick, even a t-shirt or a dish rag, something like that, um, just as a space to create more length into your arms. So we'll start in warrior two once again. Bending into the left leg, finding you're reaching evenly both directions, and then start to hinge forward. We'll find actually forearm to thigh once again, kind of going back to one so that you can maintain some space, maintain some beginner's mind. So option to bring that top arm back around. Perhaps you just bring that right hand to the sacrum, or if it's available, reaching for the inner left thigh as you peel the heart open. So it might feel nice to linger in the half bind. You could be here. If it's available, maintaining the shoulders stacking. So one of the common misalignments is there's a rounding in the heart sees the sky as a way to just kind of struggle and reach for the hand under the leg. But rather than do that, think of the bind 
is an opportunity to open up through the shoulders and shine the heart open further. So from here, try to keep the shoulders stacking as you reach the left arm under. Try to reach for the right fingers or maybe the right wrist. And then from that space, peel the heart open. So there's an extension of lengthening the arms away from the back. And then maybe you shift your gaze skyward. And so whichever variation of the shape, try to linger there for about five breaths so that you get the real benefit of strengthening through the pose. <sighs> wow, extended side angle with the option to bind. So certainly lots of options to explore there. Feel free to linger in the shape for some time, really express the um, opening of the heart. Um, some cues to think about in the shape is grounding down through the big toe mound of the front foot and grounding down through the knife side edge or the pinky toe side edge of the back foot and energetically lifting the back arch. We really want to find an equanimity into, the, into both legs and so you're grounding down through both legs evenly and drawing the navel in, lifting up through the pelvic floor. So there's a lift and a buoyancy into the shape, even though it might feel like there's quite a bit of fire into the legs. So I hope that was helpful. Please subscribe, hit the little subscribe there. You can share this video with your friends. Um, I hope that you're all doing well. And if you have any comments, suggestions for future videos, please comment below. And I hope to see you soon. Namaste.